overview about Marquee 360, an overview of Project for the Web and collaboration with Teams. Stella will present the demo. And lastly, Q&A. We always run out of time, so please post questions in the chat and we'll get them answered as we go along. And I'll also post my email so we can answer any questions you think of after we send you the recording. So a little about us. Um, we, Marquee 360 is a project and portfolio management for with Microsoft. And actually we were a finalist for partner of the year over the past couple of years. And uh, we have a global footprint in the US, Canada and Europe. Our company was founded by former Microsoft employees and our team has 20 plus years of experience in the in industry. And we work side by side with Microsoft's technology team during their development. So we keep our solution up to date with their latest and greatest. And our expertise is in digital transformation, using best practices to collaborate with whatever your current Microsoft 365 suite is. And then we help fill in the gaps by identifying your wish list to make it as effective as possible for your PM team. Our core focus is on our customer successes, of course, and we act as your trusted advisor. Our key focus is to enable better user experiences within your 365 suite. And our solution is out of the box. So it's yours once it's implemented. There's no monthly subscription fees, et cetera. So we're here to support you from start to finish. And again, I'm going to put my email in the chat. So feel free to reach out for us and we can do a private demo for your team around whatever your focus. Look forward to hearing from you. And with that, I will hand it off to Aaron. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. So like Megan mentioned, um, we are we do work on the Microsoft 365 platform and extending those capabilities. So um, what does that mean? We get so we um, have solutions that manage your entire project life cycle from start to finish. So if you're working on project for the web and you don't have the functionalities that your team really needs out of the box, we have our pre-configured solutions. So we utilize uh, Microsoft Project for your task management, scheduling, all those light um, project management features. And then we use Power Apps to extend that capability. So we give you um, scoring, uh, more tabs uh, for risks, issues, things that Project for the Web doesn't have right out of the box. And then we use Teams to bring it all together and collaborate in. So anything that you do in Project for the Web, you'll be able to do in Teams. And that's the part that we're really going to focus on um, in the demo today with Stella. And then we do utilize Power Automate to give you um, automated workflows in the background, approvals. Um, we use templates so you can automatically create projects with uh, schedules built in. And then we use Power BI at the end for reporting um, all of your reporting needs. And we do have a report pack with 12, 12 to 15 reports already built out. And along with those that big pre-configured solution that I was talking about, we also have them built out into smaller apps. So the good thing about us working with Power Platform is we can break that down to make it more manageable for your team. If you don't have the budget or you don't need all those features, um, we can just say you just need intake help with intake ideation. We have um, that broken down into just an intake app, um, timesheets, cost tracking, and um, like I said, our Power BI report pack. So anything that you actually need, you'll get from us instead of building out this huge implementation with features you don't need. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Stella. Thank you, Erin. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. everyone see my screen? Karen. We can see. Okay, good. Okay, um, so good morning and welcome. So today we are going to look at Microsoft's newest cloud-based work and project management service, which is Project for the Web. Specifically, we're going to look at how Project for the Web can be utilized for Teams create or for Teams collaboration. And this mechanism, how this mechanism is extremely useful and critical for and efficient for collaboration with your team on a project. 
So first we'll look at how a team is a team is created from the beginning of a project life, a life cycle at the time of intake. And then we will look at how to utilize team capabilities for collaboration on a project after it is created. Lastly, we will look at how the data in PPM 360 is used to populate the Power BI reports, as Aaron discussed, and we'll highlight the team's capabilities of those Power BI reports as well. So during today's webinar, we will be looking at PPM 360, which is Marquis' pre-configured accelerator for Project for the Web. We're going to discuss various options available when configuring teams for implementation at each point in the project lifecycle, starting from intake. So as you can see here, this is intake. And this is where your project managers or requesters would go to submit a project request. At the time a project request is reviewed and then approved, you have the option to have a project teams created for that project as well. Now, as you can see here in the intake form, we have various options. So we can determine if a specific request type will be created with or without a Teams, or you can simply have a field here that would act as a trigger, yes or no, and you could select yes if when the time the project is approved, you want that Teams to be created, or no if the active project, for example, already has a Teams created or some other way of document storage or collaborating with your Teams on that project. When the project is approved from intake here, the way we have it set up, a project is created. So really quickly, I'm going to just So at this point, I could select a request type, which we could predetermine to have a Teams automatically created at the time. Or as I discussed, we could talk, we could have a field here or trigger that says yes or no. This, this decision can either be made by the requester or the approver. So at the time they approve the project, the approver themselves, such as a PMO, could determine if that project would need a Teams. Or as I said before, the project manager or requester. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this project request, and we'll see that it's going to create a project in PPM 360 upon approval, and it will also create a Teams. Now, for the purposes of time, I've already gone ahead and created a Teams to display how we can see the project details and other information in that Teams when it's created. As you can see here, we have commercial property real estate, San Diego, California, which is a project that was created and submitted. Now we'll take a look at how the project looks in Teams after it's been created. So as you can see here, this project would go through an approval process upon being submitted. And based on the configurations, for example, if you determine a Teams was to be created or not, a Teams would be created and you'd receive an email notification upon the creation of that project and the Teams as well. Now that notification can be set up to automatically include in the Teams members of your team, for example, that you included in the request form or any, any other way. So for example, if you had a PMO that would need to be automatically added to any Teams created for a project, that could also be pre-configured as well. As we can see here for my project, Commercial Property Real Estate SD California, that we just saw in the intake, this was one that was submitted and approved. We can see here directly, I'll receive a notification in Teams. That it has been created, as well as an email notification. Now we'll see here that we have on our posts a welcome post which says, hi team, welcome to project team for the project name, which was commercial property real estate, San Diego, California. We can have one at the time the Teams is created, a set post, a generic post that's made, allowing them some information on the Teams and identifying to the team members that this is gonna be the central location for document storage moving forward 
throughout this project life cycle for this project. We can also include some hyperlinks, for example, directly to the project, where you can access the project directly, PPM360 from a browser, using this link. If we click on this link here, we can see it directs us to PPM360 in a browser. Now we can get an idea of what it looks like, our project would look like in the tool PPM360 or Project for the Web. As you can see here, we have these multiple options on the side and multiple tabs for our project with information. Now, if you look, we go back to our teams here and we go over to our project details, we can see here. that we can also see our project, not just the summary, but also all of the tabs here. Now, if I'm in the browser, we can see here, from my project screen here, here are all of my active projects. The benefit of Teams is that one, we can have our file storage for a given project directly within the Teams. And also, when I'm in a given Teams specifically, I'm looking at just the direct project for that. Versus if I'm in the browser, I would need to go back to my active projects list and go back and forth between the project and back to Teams or wherever my file storage currently is if it's not in Teams. However, from here, we can see that we can look at project information, and then directly go back to our folder storage where we are keeping our folders for our, our documents for this project. Hey, Stella. Yes. We had a question. Um, can the trigger be creating a new channel on an existing team instead of a new teams? Yes, we can configure it that way. Great, thank you. Um, so another thing we can actually configure as well, as you can see here, the folders. So as you can see, you can create what we call a teams template, specifically identifying the folders that you want to be created for every project that is created. Now, the benefit of this has multiple benefits. It gives, the, it gives project managers a starting point of where they can store their documents for a given project. It also, allow, it also allows for um, general information to be stored in a general way. So for example, you had a project manager leave in the middle of six projects they were managing. Another project manager could pick up that project and know where information would be set for, a specific, for that project. So for example, we can configure not only primary folders, but also subfolders. So if we see here, if we go into initiation, we can see kickoff and access, statement of work documents. And if we're going to any other ones here, we might see something like approvals, change requests, design documents. So these folders, we can get primary folders, subfolders, and even folders within these as well. Once again, we can see our project details here. And then we can also see and add, if we'd like, our PPM 360 reports. So here we can see our PPM 360 reports, which Aaron discussed is also part of our PPM 360 pack, Mark A360. So as you can see here, we have about 15 reports, including the status report here. So we can choose to either have this tab here at the time the project's created, or project managers can add them themselves. Another example here, Teams collaboration would be a notebook. So for example, if I use OneNote a lot and I, want, I have my notes in a central location, I can create a project note here 
or other team members can come and see my notes specifically for this project. So once again, Teams, teams creation from project, projects approved or created, has multiple options. If we go back to our project details page here, we can see that's also going to give us the option within PPM 360 to create the to create a team directly from the project after it's created. So as you can see here, we have a trigger, and when a new project is created, whether it be directly within PPM 360 like this, or from insert, there's a trigger field here. And if we select yes, the teams can then be created even after it has gone through intake. So does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat, so I'm gonna keep on going. So as we can see here, we'll receive a notification when the Teams is created. Now you might want, you might ask yourself, how do I add um, team members? I'm so sorry. How do I add team members to my project once upon it being created? So as I said before, you can actually specify at the time of intake specific team members you want. So for example, we can have user lookup fields that would pull from, pull from your AD. An example, if you had project sponsor or any team members, you know, IT lead, for example and you put a user in that field, we can configure it to where at the time this project is created, team members from intake or pre-specified in general, like a PMO, are always added to that team automatically. Of course, after it's created, you can still come in and add members. And once again, we can have this post here. Team members will receive a notification as well as the project manager, project sponsor. Once the project is created, via Teams activity notifications here, as well as an email notification. Now we can add, like I said before, things like PPM 360 here to be pre-configured, but we can also add them here on the side. So as you can see here, we have Power Apps. Sorry, my team is going a bit slow today. And we could access projects for the web directly from here as well. And we can also add Power BI. So we can pin Power BI to the side here rather than having it as a tab within a given project. As we can see here within Teams, I can see, I'm so sorry. As you can see here, we can see a report and I can share it, chat in Teams. And I can select someone from my team. I can type in the name of the person, whether they be from my team or not. So for example, I'm going to send to Aaron. And I can even add things to the body of the message as well. Now Aaron will receive a message on our side about this report. I can also subscribe to the report or subscribe on behalf of someone else. So for example, if I wanted to receive a notification about this report, I can set the cadence. So for example, it's daily, hourly, weekly, monthly. And I can put not only myself here, but Aaron's or anyone else on my team. I have the option to attach the full report or not, depending on the report. I can use the time zone as well. This is very useful for things for resource managers, for example, to have an internal resource report sent to them weekly or a status report. 
I go to my status report here, I can see that this is the status for my project. If I navigate to my project name specifically, from this report, I could also subscribe to the report. So for example, if you need to submit a weekly status report to MPMO, you could do that here as well. So lastly, we'll take a quick look at how we can directly from Power BI as well. We can see this within PPM 360. And you can choose to have this link on the left-hand nav that opens it directly within Project for the Web or in another browser completely. As you can see here, it's the same look and feel that we can see in our Teams, as well as our project information here. Having all of your project information, the ability to collaborate with your team members on that project and document storage, as well as a location to send updates and posts is very critical and highly efficient and useful. And personally, one of my favorite projects for the web capabilities. Hey Stella, we have a special regret request. Um, yeah. Can you show how timesheets um, work within the tool? And is it tied to resource planning? So we have a really good webinar that we actually did over resource management. Um, so we do have resources, resources capabilities um, on Teams here. You know, we can, um, there are resource capabilities as well from Teams, you know, submitting resource requests um, that have to be configured. And that's, that's a great conversation to have. The tool has great resource capabilities, absolutely. So for example, from Intake, those users I was saying who would be added to the Teams, we could also have those added directly to the team here. these team members, and as you book them on tasks within the project, directly in here on a given task, will also show up on your team. Now what's great about this is that when I assign a task to a team member, they'll receive a notification, an email, that they've been assigned to a task with a task name and a hyperlink to the project directly. What's great about this is that it's set up for email notifications, but it can also be configured for the user to receive notifications on that task assignment through Teams. This is great because if you're assigning a task, if you're assigning multiple tasks to a given team member, it's easier for them to see it in Teams than it is for them to see it, you know, through their email notifications for each given task. So it's a central location for them to see all of their tasks. So I know we have about five minutes left, so um, I hope everyone enjoyed the webinar. I'm going to hand it back over to Aaron. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions with the time that we have left. And Aaron, um, Megan, may, it might be useful to um, send the link for the resource management Absolutely. that we did. Absolutely. And, then, and you can reach out to Megan, Aaron, um, with any you know questions or to schedule a demo specifically to cover resource management for your company. Perfect. Thank you so much, Stella. We did have one um, message about intake from Lori. Um, yeah. Has anyone used the intake function for their user community to submit a project request that would then need to go through an assessment process with the technical teams to determine time frame, priority, etc.? The project may not start for a period of time until it reaches priority. Is this the project report completed within the tool? Absolutely, yes. Actually, our intake um, is what our intake is one of the many things that differentiates Marquee 360 from other um, others currently working projects of the web. Our intake system app is great, and it does have an ability a scoring system. So now this isn't only for PM. The requester could be, as you said, a technical team or whoever is submitting the request. Then in within the request let's say it's a PMO or resource manager, they can just determine who the project manager will be at the time they make the intake request, or the approver can assign that project manager once it's approved. Now you asked about scoring. 
we actually have a great scoring system here where we can pre-configure questions to be determined. And as you can see here, as I select options, my priority score is going to change. This can be set up in any way. So for example, reduce expense base question can be 20% of the total priority score here or less. However, the scoring model works for your system to determine that priority. As we can see here, the priority score. Hey going Stella, to... sorry, go ahead. super yeah. quick. Sorry, yeah. I uh, took over sharing no, to show our last slide. So I just wanted to let you know your screen wasn't showing if you wanted to share again. Okay, sorry, okay, here. Here's my screen. So, um, right. so, so new new project request here. We have a great scoring model. So as you can see here, you can have predetermined questions that the requester would fill out. And as they make these choice options, we can see here the priority score varies. So we can have one choice option here, for example, you know, weigh 10% or another choice op or another question here for the scoring model might weigh 50% or more. We can also have it set up to where the priority score number is simply, you know, adding one, so seven or more. Or we could have it set up to where it's just choice values and the requester doesn't see it. Now what's great is from the gallery, which is what we call this page here where we can see all the requests. You can have these columns that you're seeing these requests by anything, any field that you have within a project request. So for example, we could have one that says priority and then determine the score. Or we can configure the scoring to where when we configure it, if you have predetermined things, so for example, a score of one to four would be considered low, we can configure that within the system. So it will read that priority score and set the prioritization, low, medium, medium, high, high, for example, and you can see that here. I can filter through all of these and there is an approval process as well that we can go through for one approver or even up to five I've seen. And you can determine if a request is sent to multiple approvers and the number of approvers that must approve that request before it's actually created at each step as well. So we have very extensive options for intake. I love our intake um, app. So I definitely reach out to Aaron and Megan. It's um, probably one of my favorite things about Marquee 360. Thank you. Appreciate that. Happy. I hope everyone found this very useful. Um, teams out of all project management tools, I think that the team's collaboration for projects for the web has been one of the most useful. And because projects for the web is Microsoft's newest project management tool, they are making so, so a lot of advances on it and teams collaboration will also have planner in the next couple of months, fingers crossed, <laughs> <laughs> which will make it very useful as well for organizing those tasks from a planner board within teams. Awesome. Great job, Stella. Thank you. Um, yes, anybody reach out if you want us to do a, uh, a demo for your company. Um, we are happy to jump on and, and Stella will also give uh, any helpful hints and updates at that time. So reach out to any of us. And um, I believe Aaron put a survey in the chat. So if you want to give us some feedback, we always appreciate it. And really happy um, you all got to come today and I will go ahead and send out that recording and please reach out with questions. Thanks, Megan. I just wanted to quickly add, um, I know we're getting a lot of questions about other apps too. So if you check out our YouTube channel, we have all of our past webinars recorded on there and also all of our app demos. So um, feel free to check that out. If you, um, I'll put the link to our channel in the chat and, uh, Feel free to browse around if you see if you don't see anything and you or you have questions reach out to us thanks everybody <laughs>